G'day everyone, welcome to Brushes with Beck. Today's video is all about Inktober. Now at the beginning I've just got a little art supply haul for Inktober that I did before moving on to all the daily prompts for the first two weeks or so. So the first thing I picked up was this Pentel brush pen. I ordered it before I bought those watercolour brush pens you saw in my previous video. I was really excited about using this. I'd watched some people use it on YouTube and I thought it could be a really fun tool for Inktober. I also bought some Sakura Pigma Micron like fine liner pens in a 0 0.1, 0 0.3 and 0 0.5 or it's 0.01 or I can't remember. And also the Sakura Pigma brush pens. I thought they'd be really useful for adding some color. Though I'm a bit disappointed I didn't realize they didn't come with a yellow. There's a red and an orange and a green and a blue and a brown but there's no yellow which is a bit odd. The Pigma fine liners are pretty much exactly what you would expect. Um, but they are archival ink, which is great if you want to sell your artwork or something like that. And yeah, I needed some new ones because I went digging for my old fine liners and the ones that I found were all really dry and nasty. So I really needed those. Now the Sakura Pigma brush pens are pretty good. They've got these lovely little tips on them and <laughs> came in this array of colors. I also bought this white gel pen to use for highlights and that sort of thing in case I went over some dark areas or I wanted to add some highlights in the eye or that sort of thing. And so, so then I just had to figure out how to put the ink into the Pentel brush pen because it came with four ink refills. It has a very nice brush nib on it. So it's just a simple matter of unscrewing the barrel and then the refills just clip onto that with a very satisfying click I might add. My apologies that's not on this video. But yeah just pop it onto there and it just clicks on and then you have to wait. It says you know hold it upright until the ink flows. I think it took about three minutes uh, for it to get the ink flowing for me. And then once it was flowing, it, you know, and I brushed it across the paper a little bit, it came on the rest of the way very, very quickly. So here I am just having a bit of a practice with all of those supplies, making sure they work, making sure that I know how to use them. And I don't necessarily use them well, but at least I know, you know, how they work sort of thing. And as you can see, the brush pen now has ink starting to flow to it and as I brush it along the page that becomes much more saturated. So just doing a few little marks with that on the page just to sort of get the feel of it a tiny bit before I destroy my first Inktober prompt. We'll see, see how that goes moving on to the prompts. So day one of prompts was fish. So for that I drew a beta fish because I thought it would be a good opportunity to not only try the Pentel brush pen but to also add some colour with the brush markers. So just a basic outline and I attempted to blend the brush markers here you know with the with the different blend the different colours together. Um, it worked out okay. The orange blended into the red okay because I left some gaps and sort of made it work but they don't blend as such not like the watercolor brush pens do you this just you know solid color that goes down and then doesn't bleed out or um, move if you lay another color over the top but just added some vibrant color on here and I used the white gel pen as well for highlights and to just help highlight the eye and give that a little bright spot and the result was fun it was like a nice bright first in day one into Inktober so days two, day two's prompt was Wisp and originally I thought I might do like a horse's mane or something like that but then I remembered I had this fantastic reference photo of a windswept emu with his feathers just blowing across and I thought I just had to use it because emu feathers are quite wispy to begin with, quite fine, they're not like other bird feathers so it just made for the perfect subject. And I had a lot of fun with this one and you guys, it, it, this one was really well received on Instagram and I think it was my most, so far it's my most liked Inktober picture, which is really great. And I loved adding the different textures between the, um, the feathers and the beak because I did stippling all on the beak to define some, you know, 
shadows and the fact that it was darker and not bright white, but I wanted to make sure it had a different texture to the feathers so that didn't get lost. And I think that actually worked out quite well. So that is day two wisp. I love that result. So moving on to day three, unfortunately day three, four and five, all the footage got corrupted and I was really, really upset about it and I couldn't recover it. So there's the image of an Indian elephant. I had originally planned to do bulk colors of just black blocks and then white areas to define the shape without any detail, but I got a bit too scared to do that because I didn't know what I was doing. So I just added small areas of black and then added the detail in over the top. And I really liked the end result. Day four was radio. This is another one I lost the footage for. Now, I was a bit stumped on the prompt, but I thought ears would relate to that reasonably well. So these are the ears of a maned wolf. I'm not a big fan of this one. It was a bit challenging. My reference photo wasn't too clear. So I've kind of fumbled a bit with the detail, but I mean, it's come out all right. It's just not, certainly not my favorite piece. Moving on to day five, day five was blade. And I decided to draw the horns of a black buck. This is one I photographed recently and I just love the spiral in the horn and the different textures and the way it laid over itself. And that was actually really, really fun to draw with the pens. And sketching was the hard part. I, I think I resketched it like three times to fit them on the page because I kept getting the proportions wrong, but it worked out in the end. Moving on to day six, finally got my corruption issues sorted, or at least I thought so. You'll notice, see more, hear more about that in a little bit. Day six's prompt was rodent, and this one was really, really fun. I remember I had a photo of this rat that I took when I was out doing some bird photography one day. I saw him sitting under a bush, and I knew I just had to illustrate him for this prompt. Now, when I was doing this one, I was thinking about all those books I read as a kid, like The Animals of Farthing Wood, and at the start of each chapter, they would have a little a little pen ink illustration of a little animal, and I used to love those illustrations, and I was thinking about that as I was drawing this rat. And I'm really pleased with the result. I like the texture and the impression of different color tones of the fur, and I think it worked out really, really nicely, and I'm very pleased with this one. It's very cute. Day seven's prompt was fancy and I was stumped on this one as well until somebody suggested that I should just draw one of my rabbits wearing a bow tie. So that's what I did. I loved the idea. So this is one of my rabbits. His name is Apollo. He is about, I think he's about five and a half, maybe six years old. And he is a New Zealand white mix. So he's very floofy and poofy and he just has some darker areas on his ears. So I've just illustrated that there. And then the rest of him is completely white. So I've just indicated sort of details of fur in some areas. I had trouble deciding between green and orange for the bow tie, but you can see I eventually went with green, which I think was a good choice. And I only used color on that and I thought it would really help make it stand out and would really help, you know, give the impact of the prompt fancy if the bow tie was colored and the rest of it wasn't. So prompt eight was teeth. And I knew from early on I had to do this skull. Unfortunately, I did lose half of this footage to file corruption as well. Fortunately, after this, I did definitely get it sorted because I just got rid of those memory cards and bought all new ones, even though they were new ones. I was really disappointed to lose the footage for this because I was really proud of how it turned out. And it took me three hours to do, which is way longer than I expected. I forgot how long stippling takes, but I absolutely adore the result. It came out way better than anything I expected. This is a thylacine skull, if I hadn't mentioned that. I photographed it at the museum recently, and I just knew it's something I had to do for this prompt. It turned out well, way better than I thought it would because it's been years and years since I've done stippling. I think the last time I did stippling was in high school art class. But I love this one. It's probably my favorite. So the next prompt was throw. Sorry, I've lost track of the days. I think maybe we're on day nine. Uh, was throw. And I thought of the black-breasted buzzard. This bird is native to arid regions of Australia. 
And they, they quite fancy eating the eggs of other birds, particularly emus. So they will actually pick up stones and drop them or throw them onto the emu egg to crack it open, which is a pretty neat trick. I know there are other birds that will do this or use, uh, I can't remember the name of the bird, I remember seeing a bird on a documentary that would drop bones from a height onto rocks to open them up so it could eat the marrow. So it's a very clever trick. So this one was a very quick piece, very loose and messy, just with the brush pens to get some colour in because I hadn't used them very much. I'm not too keen on this one, but you know what? It suits the theme and I liked that it sort of told a story. Day 10's prompt. Day 10's prompt was hope. And I decided on doing a little sea turtle that has just hatched from his egg and is making his way to the ocean. Because when you think about the number of sea turtles that hatch from their eggs and the percentage that survive to adulthood, I don't remember what it is, but it is way lower than any number you would ever think. It's terribly, terribly low. So these guys have such a low chance of surviving to become an adult and reproducing themselves and carrying on their genetics. But there is always hope for every last little sea turtle that makes it to the ocean. So I thought that would be a really nice concept to illustrate here. Pretty simple drawing, but it gets the message across. Day 11 prompt is disgusting. And what do people think of when they think of disgusting? Rotting meat and bones might be one thing. I'm not that fussed by them, but I'm more of a... I can appreciate anything in nature, really. I find it fascinating. So I thought that could be really fun to use the brush pen with, get some heavy shadows on those bones, some flesh falling off of them, that kind of thing. And I had fun with this. It's pretty simple. I was a bit rushed, but, you know, I like the result. I used some blue from the brush marker to get some shadow on there. And then I decided that what would make it even more disgusting is if I added some red onto those fleshy parts of the bones. And I think that really made it really made it pop rather than just being, you know, just some old bones lying around and bleached by the sun. The red made it look more fresh. So that was kind of a fun one. So of course the next prompt after that was slippery. And this prompt could have this picture that I drew could have also been used for the disgusting prompt. Because I remembered I had a picture of a giraffe with its tongue up its nose, which is, it's gross, let's be honest. But I thought, you know, if I could illustrate the tongue right, it would be a really good depiction of Slippery. So once again, I am using the Pentel brush pen. I am really enjoying using this, being able to get varying line widths without having to change pens and just experimenting with line weight and the heaviness of the shadows and where I put lines to really indicate form rather than sketching out every single detail. And it's been a lot of fun and I really love the result with this one and I'm pleased that the tongue does look sort of wet and slippery. So that's that one. Then we have prompt for day 13, which was June. And I drew this little fat-tailed dunnart. They're a native Australian marsupial. They are carnivorous. Well, they eat insects and other things like that. So they are actually related to the Tasmanian devil and quolls and the extinct thylacine. And I had a lot of fun with this one. I, I just love doing fur with pens. It's just really something about it. It's a lot of fun. And... Yeah, just getting a bit of a depiction of an animal in a habitat and not just an animal there. So some dunes in the background to fit the theme, some plants in the foreground, and just really trying to, I guess, use the different line weights there with the plants closer to the front with the pentel brush pen with a thicker line and then fading away into the distance. And this one was, was quite a bit of fun and I do like the end result. So the prompt for day 14 was armor. Now this one I did freehand, no pencil sketch for this one because I wanted to keep it loose and a bit more, a bit less time consuming and a bit more fun. 
So I went ahead with one of the fine liners and I'm drawing a turtle for the prompt armor. I can't remember what species of turtle this is because honestly, I can't remember where I took this photo. It could have been in Australia. It could have been in Florida. But in any case, there's a cute little turtle with a long neck and I suspect it's probably an Australian photo, but who knows? <laughs> so I just went through and drew in the basic shapes, added in some texture and shading just to sort of refine it a little bit and give it a little bit of depth but it was a pretty simple sketch but I really enjoyed drawing sketching freehand with the pen and something a bit looser for the day was really really nice and that's what Inktober's about is trying new things and experimenting with different things and developing new skills and it's been a lot of fun so far. So the next prompt we have is for day 15 and that prompt is Outpost. Originally I was thinking of doing maybe like a bird of prey perched on a cliff or something like that and then I thought of the cute little meerkats at the zoo or you know in the wild perched on top of a mound or a stick or a bush keeping watch for the rest of their troop. So I just had to illustrate that and rather than initially I sketched the meerkat up close like as a full image just of the meerkat and then I thought no it fits the theme better if we've got a scene to match it. So he's up on his outpost on that branch surveying the scene while some other meerkats you know are around in the scene foraging for food and wandering about. So I'm really pleased with sort of how that came together from a concept of hey meerkats to the scene with the with the meerkats together with the sentry. So the final prompt for this video is rocket and I thought a grasshopper was a great thing to illustrate for that because they can take off with those legs so fast. Once again, using the Pentel brush pen, like I said, I love this pen. It's fun to play with the line weights and the heavy shadows. So yeah, basically you'll just see that come together here. Now, if you want to keep up with my daily uh, Inktober prompts, I upload them daily to Instagram if you want to see them on there because it's going to be another two weeks before I get an Inktober video out. So follow me on Instagram at Brushes with Beck. I am also posting them onto Facebook, though not every day, just every few days. I'm at Brushes with Beck there as well. So thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. I do upload a new video every single week. And I look forward to seeing you next time. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Stay creative.